Hello, and welcome to another episode of Pensies. It's It's been a long time since I have turned on the cameras. Um, can't exactly say that's because I've had too much to do. I've wrestled with a couple topics, had even the cameras set up to record on them, and decided mm, that's not exactly right for the next video. I'm not excited enough about it. Uh, but I've been reading in the meantime um, and learning, and something's piqued my interest that I thought I want to share that with you all. And uh, by you all, I especially mean those of you who have stepped out and spoken to me, written an email, spoken to me in person, uh, and said that you appreciate these videos and that you would like to see more. Uh, thank you so much. That's very helpful uh, to me, as well as those of you who have subscribed or have um, liked videos, uh, rung the notification bell. But uh, the topic that I wanted to talk about um, is hospitality. And where I got this idea is, um, well, starting with this first book that I've been reading. Um, it's the How the Irish Saved Civilization. Um, it is uh, a book that I read about 20 years ago. Um, I read it as, a, I think, an audio book as I was traveling cross-country in the U.S. And um, it's just a wonderful historical account of how uh, Western society moved from being dominated by the Roman Empire to what we call the Dark Ages, Middle Ages, um, and all of that. And the special role that the Irish played in that in, um, well, in terms of saving civilization, the basic idea is that the Irish, who were just learning to read, gobbled up all the books that they could find, and in a time when it was not exactly easy to reprint books, wrote out manuscripts by hand and thereby saved a great deal of the literature that was current in um, the Roman Empire. And um, the, the, the rest of Europe, um, specifically Western Europe, where barbarians had more or less destroyed everything that was um, Roman civilization, perhaps. Certainly, they weren't very interested in books or reading, but um, the Irish were. And that is how they, uh, according to Thomas Cahill, saved civilization. Now, one of the other things that they did was that they founded these monasteries um, and started founding them all over Europe. Um, their monasteries were typical in that they were hospitable, but also they were hospitable to a variety of people. So um, families would actually live uh, with the monks in the monastery. They were a little bit more like a, a village, uh, a commune, um, or just a, a place where people lived, and uh, monks were more or less the ones who were in charge. So that, that interesting idea uh, stuck with me, and I was excited about Celtic spirituality, Celtic uh, Christianity um, this time. So I read a couple other books, and I dug up another book, which I also read about 15, 16 years ago. It was one of my favorite books back then, and I'm um, reading it again, and it's really another uh, winner, The Cloister Walk by Kathleen Norris. Um, Kathleen Norris is a I guess you could say a poet, though she's probably more known for writing creative nonfiction books like this, little tiny essays, um, creatively written, um, lots of metaphor, very poetic in that. And this talks about her time at a Benedictine monastery. It's a very honest book, um, not a really plot-driven book, but one with really wonderful descriptions, uh, good uh, humor. Um, she writes how I would like to be able to write. Um, but in there, there's this chapter. Let me find it. This is the reason why, by the way, it's good to make little notes in the back. I, I've even started here. Um, you can see 
little tiny notes to help you know where you found things uh, that were important. Um, I just don't have this in there. Ah, here it is. Uh, in a section on uh, Mechtid of Magdeburg, whose day apparently is March 18th, so that's also coming up with St. Patrick's Day also uh, coming up. Um, a German um, who lived, German, boy, I don't even know, a long time ago. Uh, Kathleen uh, Norris writes in here, hospitality is at the center of it all. In a world in which we are so easily labeled and polarized by our differences, man, woman, Protestant, Catholic, gay, straight, feminist, chauvinist, monastic hospitality is a model of the kind of openness we need if we are going to see and hear each other at all. The radical incarnational nature of that hospitality hasn't diminished at all since Mechtild's time or St. Benedict's. It still has the power to effect conversion and work miracles. In nearly the 10 years that I have been a Benedictine oblate, I have been convinced that hospitality is at the center of the Christian faith. It's a very intriguing statement and has gotten me thinking a lot about how um, hospitality really has shaped a lot of what Western spirituality is. And I think that's perhaps... Um, something that can be rather difficult to realize in Western societies now, even though Benedict, with the Benedictines, uh, that's the monastery she was at, and um, Patrick both modeled hospitality for Western Europe, uh, which Western Europe has then uh, influenced the Western world, um, to a degree where we think this should be one of our things. So one of the things that I think that makes it more difficult is the fact that now, as a perhaps uh, opposed to the middle dark ages, early middle ages in which Patrick and Benedict worked, is that Europe um, has become much more of an urban society. 60% of Europeans live in cities. And it has, um, it's not sort of, doesn't have the rural uh, that it certainly used to have and had in the early Middle Ages. And that presents some challenges to um, this. So I want to talk a little bit about how I and my family have, what we have learned and how we have practiced this and um, what we've uh, gained from it. I've got four or five things. Um, the first thing that I think we've learned is that uh, hospitality is really a matter of the heart, um, much more than it is of the resources uh, that you think that you have available. Um, so when we invite somebody over or somebody needs a place to stay, uh, when we're in that position to um, offer something to somebody, what really matters uh, much more than how great their bed is, or how great our meal is, or how great our apartment looks, or how much space and places to sit we have, is how open we are for the people that are going to be coming into our home and um, taking up our time. And that's really a matter of whether we're ready to listen to them, to ask questions, to pay attention to them, be engaged, and Sometimes we can be caught up with not necessarily preparations, preparing meals or anything, but just more topics that perhaps um, are overwhelming us. And I think one of the most important things to do when in hospitality is to kind of, you need to pick up your own soul a little bit. I, not too much, but you need to sort of make room in your inner life to sort of say, okay, I'm ready to meet this person. It may not take very long. It may mean just sitting down for 10 minutes before somebody arrives and saying, okay, here I am. This person's coming. 
uh, God, help me to bless this person, be there for that person, um, put everything else aside. Um, it may mean that you need to spend even more time preparing yourself to actually meet people. Um, I don't want to set the bar too high, and that's really the the aim of this video is to sort of try to lower the bar. Um, but I do want to point out the importance of preparing your yourself for other people, and that's really the issue. Um, second thing I would say is you just you share what you have, obviously, and not what you don't have. So don't worry about how little your space is. If all you have is uh, for a table is a little space in the kitchen that comfortably sits two people and uncomfortably sits one, well, that's going to set some limits on how many people you're going to be able to sit and have a meal with. But it should, you know, be it will be enough to invite those limited numbers of people. We have we have a table which um, really only fits four comfortably and six uncomfortably, and we've had up to seven, eight, nine people sitting there, and we find other solutions when we have even more than that in, in our house. Um, our, our, our apartment, uh, previous apartment, which we moved out of last year, uh, really only had one common room where we ate, um, had our living room, and also I worked there when the other uh, family members weren't in there. The rest was just bedrooms and uh, bathroom, kitchen. Uh, it was not a very big space, but we just opened it up to people and had people sit at our four-person comfortable table. And, you know, I never, we never had anybody turn down an opportunity to be with us because the the space was too small. I mean, I, another thing about it is, uh, thirdly, don't be perfectionistic about how you're presenting yourself. Uh, a lot of that is mainly about ego and image, and it's not really what people are looking for. Um, so it doesn't really matter how great of a cook you are. It doesn't matter how picked up your apartment is. Um, picking it up uh, a little bit. It does help that people don't have to sort of swim in your sofa in order to find a place to to sit. Um, but, you know, we have uh, and had little kids who just left things all over the place. And, um, you know, that was just part of coming to visit us. And we didn't let that uh, stop us. Um, didn't let it stop us that our kids were required our attention. We'd have to um, lose uh, attention to the guests. Um, I've messed up meals that I was preparing to serve to people. Um, we've not been uh, perfect hosts in many ways, and that's really not the point of being a perfect host. Um, we're not. That's not really what uh, hospitality is about. And again, that's just back where you can say hospitality is mainly a matter of the heart and whether you're able to create the space within yourself to listen to people. Um, if you don't have a lot of time, if you have a job that um, is very demanding, well, you just you use the time that you have. And, um, you know, it's going to require, too, that you're going to be rested. Uh, I know if I'm tired, it's very hard to do these sorts of things. So it's going to um, take what we can. We don't serve necessarily the the highest quality uh, meals, though we try to do what we can. Um, and again, nobody has ever complained about those sort of things. It's just really um, not what it's about. And, you know, people sleep on the floor in our apartment. People sleep on the sofa. Um, we've given our beds uh, to people. We've, we sleep on the floor. The kids uh, offer their beds. So it's just... Um, you just take what you have and uh, you share that. Now, the fourth thing is really uh, how you would get started. And I would just ask people, just and ask all sorts of people. Um, it may be 
easiest to start with the people that you know. Um, I, you know, I don't know if they've ever actually been to your place or ever um, eaten a meal with you. Is you eat a meal, ever wash dishes um, or helped prepare? Um, that's a good place to start, but then you can start with other, you know, work colleagues, um, neighbors, um, people in the community groups that you're with, um, in the hobby groups, uh, people that you know through school, all sorts of people. And um, this, I think, is something which could really change uh, our cities, European cities, if they were known as places where people were willing to share their small uh, apartment spaces with each other and with all sorts of different kinds of people, people who didn't uh, agree on a number of issues. Um, it's just a way of uh, learning who people are, um, where they stand, uh, hearing their stories. Um, and I just don't know any other way to do you do that? So that's what I would do to get started with uh, hospitality. Just uh, start small. Um, don't be perfectionistic. Um, be aware that your heart is at, at play, and just just ask people. Just uh, find, seek the people that are already around you in the city, and just see um, if they want to um, spend time with you. Well, that's all I've got for today. Um, if you liked this video, please actually show your like um, physically, like like it with your finger, um, uh, as well as subscribing with your finger or your mouse, I suppose it may be mouse pad. Um, sign, there's, there's like a notification bell, I guess that that gives you sort of messages that uh, there are new videos and there are other videos, older videos, so please check those out. Trying to do 15 of these this year, maybe there will be more. I hope there's not less than that, um, but uh, if you would consider uh, sponsoring this so that we can keep going, um, you know, it probably has a greater effect at this point on my uh, encouragement to keep doing this than a, um, than the than the money, but um, there's more that we can do with uh, more funds in the account. And um, so consider doing that. You can do it with Patreon or there are other means that you can uh, get um, money to us. Come uh, visit the Sanctus uh, Institute, uh, Sanctus Forum uh, website and um, find uh, the other videos that we've done. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the next video. Um, and uh, I'll see you then. So here's one I can I can hide. You know, like here. Happy stay.